Hi, I'm Safin Tia. This is very introductory stat course for beginners. Fundamentals 5. Variables and Data In prior class, we learned about the 5% p-value reference. The reference point of 5% p-value means that we accept 5% type 1 error with our statistical test. And the choice between null and alternative hypothesis totally depends on the p-value. So, if p-value is less than 0 0.05, we should determine the alternative hypothesis is right. Otherwise, if p-value is larger than 0 0.05, it confirms that the null hypothesis is right. In other words, um, if the probability that 10k sales growth is occurred by chance is less than 5%, it means that the new promotion strategy was very statistically significant. However, if the p-value is larger than 5%, it means that the event here, the event is 10k sales growth is just simply occurred by chance. Okay. Today we will go on the variable. So what is the variable in statistics? If you check any uh, textbook, maybe uh, the definition is like this. A characteristic of a unit being observed that may assume more than one of a set of values to which a numerical measure or a category from a classification can be assigned. Huh. Can you understand the meaning? It's very difficult. So here, um, simply speaking, simply speaking, the variable is varying number. So, in variable, in any variable, there are so many numbers, and the numbers are varying, okay? And the variable is also unknown value. We don't know the value before our, uh, before our checking on that kind of some descriptive statistics, okay? And uh, this is a symbol for a number we don't know. So, usually, we just uh, describe or we just uh, write down uh, like uh, X or Y. Okay? Here, the varying means the number or value is changed. For example, okay. If your company surveyed your customer about customer satisfaction, so each customer just responded differently from 1 to 5. Here, 1 means very unsatisfied. 5 means very satisfied. So some of your uh, customers just check number 3 or number 4, sometimes number 5. Here, the number from 1 to 5 are totally different from each customer, okay? But what is the antonym of variable? Do you know? That is constant. Constant. Here, constant is not changing, okay? And constantly same, we call it constant. Okay, let me see more. The left side uh, is a kind of a example of survey. Okay, uh, you can ask to your customers about the customer satisfaction with uh, multiple questions. And after getting uh, responses from your customers about 100, 200, anyway, 300, and then you will code. We, we call it coding. 
in the Excel usually. The right side is a Excel screen. Um, sometimes uh, my student asks me, how can I code my survey result? I just have a paper. Okay, right. Here, um, I just show how to code your paper result of the questionnaire. As you can see here, uh, the first row is the name of variable, okay? Name of variable. Usually, I highly recommend you must use as the first column should be ID, ID numbers. So number one, number two, number three, this is the your customer number, okay? And here, the variable is this column. Column is variable. And each row, this blue box, is observation. So, let me see here one more time. Here, the column is variable. So, if you have a one, two, three, four, five question, one, two, three, four, five. This is each matching to this one and right side coding. Okay? And if you can see, as you can see here, the row, the blue box row is an observation. This one row means one customer one response okay and next i will check the structure of variable here one example okay variable has attribute for example we have a education level this is our variable, education level. And for this variable, we made four attributes, middle school, high school, college, and grad student. Okay, middle school, high school, college, or university level, and the graduate school. So four levels here. We call it attribute, okay? And then, as you can see here, these attributes are not numbers, just characters, words. So, these four attributes could not be used for statistical analysis. So, we assigned numbers to each attribute. So, here we have value. One, two, three, four. And sometimes, these values have kind of some relationship but sometimes there is no relationship between uh, these values, okay? So, based on the structure of variable, we will check the type of variable. Very simple. Variable could be uh, categorized into two parts. Okay, here. First one, discrete or categorical. And the second one is continuous. As you can see here, each discrete and continuous also have two types of variable, nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio. Okay, let me see one by one, nominal. Um, nominal variable has no order among attributes. And numbers simply represent attributes but there are no meanings. For example, gender, male and female. Okay. The variable gender has two attributes, male and female. There is no order, right? And also, if we assign zero to male and one to female, in that case, the zero and one has no meaning for male and female, okay? And likewise, race and blood types are nominal. 
The second one is ordinal. Okay, ordinal. This one. Um, for ordinal variable, there is an order among attributes, and numbers represent its names and order because we have order here. But the distance among attributes are not equal. For example, grade or education level and Likert scale. Okay. And uh, interval ratio. Mm, usually the numbers, numerical numbers are interval or ratio. However, in my um, experience, actually, I think uh, most numbers are ratio, not interval. Interval variable is very, very rare. Okay, here, the interval variable is equal distance among attribute. And numbers are not ratio, not ratio, this mean ratio. Numbers are not absolute zero. So, you can add your variables, interval variables, the plus is okay, but multiplication is not okay. For example, as I know, the interval variable is, the representative variable is Celsius and Fahrenheit, okay? But this is uh, not general, I think. Most numerical variables are ratio, okay? Ratio variables here. Ratio variables has equal distance among attributes and numbers could be ratio and also this uh, variable includes absolute zero. So the plus and uh, multiplications, all things are okay. For example, height, weight, age are ratio variable, okay? So here, um, we have a quiz. We learned about nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio variable. Okay. The example case, customer satisfaction is what kind of variable? among nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio. Can you guess? The originally right answer is the customer satisfaction is ordinal. Because when we use when we ask a question to our customers, we use a Likert type scale for customer satisfaction. Number one is very unsatisfied, two is unsatisfied, three is just normal, and number four is satisfied, and five is very satisfied. There is an order. Yeah, right. But it is not interval, not ratio, originally. However, however, nowadays, um, in any cases, in academies and practical world anyway, this liquid type customer satisfaction is used as like a ratio. Because, um, okay, uh, when we ask a question about the customer satisfaction, we use a record, uh type scale, okay? But it is kind of a, a problem like a, a tool, tools problem. If we ask to your uh, a customers like, uh, are you satisfied from 0 to 100? Okay, it is okay, you can use that. But uh, it is not, mm, I think, uh, efficient. In some meaning, in your customer's mind, there is a kind of some numbers like a ratio, okay? But when you ask a question, it is not efficient, the number from 0 to 100, 0 to 1,000, 
zero to one million. What what is more uh, uh what is good? What what is better uh, between these uh, many things? However, the Likert time scale is of course have some limitation. It is very very efficient. So we just use that. But when we when you um analyze the numbers from your questionnaire and survey you can use the variable um just uh, like a ratio okay fundamentals five variables and data i will stop here today mm -hmm.